Hold on. Hello, shoddy face. Hello, besties. It is officially now. Nah, what day is it? <laughs> The 30th! It is officially April 30th. That means it is the last day of the month. That means it is time for the monthly wrap up. You guys know the deal. If you're new, hi! First and foremost, can we get a little commotion for the shirt, okay? So this is my new Callaway sister shirt. I'll link the Etsy down below of the angel who got it for me. So yeah, if you want a matchy match. Moving on, we are going to discuss all the books I read this month. There are no spoilers in any of these videos ever. I will just show you the book, tell you a little bit about them, and then just tell you when I rated it. It's a fun time. I think this month I read 22 books, I'm pretty sure. So I started out my month reading Things I Wanted to Say and A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime, both by Monica Murphy. These are both by the same author and they are set in the same universe, but they are standalones. These characters are not even in each other's books. If you'd like to only read one, go for it. But if you're gonna only read one, may I suggest this one? Look how cute though, y'all. Come on, give it up for the covers. Tell me that shit's not beautiful. You'd be lying. So Things I Wanted to Say follows Wit and Summer and it is dual POV and it is set in a boarding high school. And Wit, Lancaster, is the son of the people who own the school. So Lanca Lancaster Prep. Why was that such a mouthful for me to say? Because English isn't my first language, of course. The boarding school, his family owns it. And so he basically rules that school. He can do no wrong. Anything he says goes. And Summer and him met a long time ago. They had an encounter when they were really, really young. And now she sees him years later at this school. He hates her family. Family. Therefore, he doesn't like her. He kind of shuns her around school until one night he saves her from something and they may or may not spark a little romance along the way. This is very much a bully romance, you guys. If you are not into bully romances, I'm not sure if you would like this. And it is so smutty. It was sort of like an enemies with benefits type of situation. They didn't call it that, but that's kind of what it was. I liked it, but I did not love it because I kept waiting for there to be a connection between the characters. The first 80% of the book is just smut and you don't really get to know them on a deeper level. But then the last like 15%, you really see how they feel and I liked those parts a lot. So I rated it a four star. It's just that bully romance and just way too much smut with no connection is not my personal vibe. So I didn't love it, but I did like it. Now things I wanted to say is a bully romance, like I said, and it's a little bit dark. So I would search up trigger warnings if you're gonna read this one. But then you have a million kisses in your lifetime and this is it. So a million kisses in your lifetime it follows crew and it follows Ren. It is also dual POV, it is set in Lancaster Prep as well. It is also high school. The only connection between this book and things I wanted to say is that Crew and Wit are both Lancasters. Anyway, so Crew is known as like the school's bad boy and Ren is known as the school's good girl. You see where I'm going with this bad guy, good girl. We love that trope. She is a virgin. She wears a period ring and she's very vocal about that. And Crew and her for some reason just do not vibe. Ever since they saw each other, they were like, no. Until one day they are set to work together on a school project and they start getting to know each other. I loved this fucking book. I loved this fucking book so much, you guys. Everything that things I wanted to say was, A Million Kisses was not, if that makes sense. Because this one was so full of smut the entire time and no connection, whereas this one was full of connection and less smut. It still had spice, don't get me wrong, but it was mostly about their connection. It was about crew getting to know Ren. It was about Ren getting to know herself and come to terms with her sexuality and understanding that women don't have to be ashamed of that. Because in the beginning of the book, I will say she was pretty judgmental. For me, at least, I was like, girl, I'm gonna need you to relax. I'm gonna need you to stop shaming other people for their choices. But she really, really grew. This has the boy obsessed trope. Crew was obsessed with her, obsessed. There's literally no other way to describe it. The things he did for this girl in this book, it had some of my favorite moments. I rated it 4.75. The only reason why this book wasn't a five for me was because there really was no plot. Like nothing really happened. The whole point was their connection. It was very character based and I love that, but I wanted a little bit more angst. I wanted a little bit more plot. I wanted something to happen, but throughout the whole book, nothing really happened. Like I said, it's really focused on them too. So four stars for this one, 4.75 for this one. The next four books I read that I'm going to discuss, I'm not going to talk too much about them. I'm not going to go too in depth because I did discuss them in my single parent video and that literally is my last video. So you can just watch it if you want to see, but it's these four right here. It is Happily Letter After by Vicky Lynn and Penelope Ward, 1% of You by Michelle Gross, The Newspaper Nanny, Mary Moore, and Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Silimone. So 
So happily with letter after, dual POV, single dad, very fast paced. I think this one would be a good one if you're in a reading slump. Very much based on fate. It was really, really fucking cute. I love single dad. I love single dad, especially when it's to a little girl and the little girl in this book was so amazing. And some of the twists I didn't expect. So that was cool too. I liked this book. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is my favorite book of all time. But I really had a great time reading it and it was very cute. And I rated it 4.25 for Sebastian and Sadie. Happily letter after. Now 1% of you by Michelle Gross is amazing. If you like single parent, you're gonna love this book. 1 percent of you follows Hadley and Elijah and it is dual POV. The mom not only has a little girl, but she's also pregnant. So you get a double whammy there, double kid, double single parent. And Elijah is a very hot, very grumpy, tatted up guy who owns a tattoo shop and is Hadley's neighbor. And he also hates kids. Every time I say Elijah, I think Elijah Michelson. I can't help it. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I definitely also had Boy Obsessed in here. He meets them when he's at a grocery store and he steals a bag of chips from the little girl. Deadass, arguing in the middle of a grocery store with a little girl. <laughs> It is also very funny. It's very light. It's such a cute read. It just gives everything that it needs to give. I rated it a 4.5. It didn't quite feel like a five just because the X in the book really pissed me off. So it wasn't a full five star, but 4.5, so, so cute. Now these last two, I rated both 3.5. I liked them, but they weren't that special to me. To be honest with these two, when I closed the book, I quite literally forgot everything that happened. Other Girl follows Ari and Russell, and you only get one POV in this one, only hers. She works at a news station as the, you guessed it, weather girl, and Russell is the sports guy, sports announcer person. Yeah, they come together because they are trying to get their bosses to stop hating each other. Their bosses have been divorced for a while. It makes basically everybody's lives that work in this station miserable and they come up with this plan that they're gonna get them together. That sounds like that one movie. There's a movie on Netflix that's exactly like this. Isn't there? I really, really did love two things about this book though, but none of them were centered around the romance. It was the fact that it had mental health representation and plus size representation because Russell is plus size and she has depression. So you do get to see what Russell and Ari go through. You get to see therapy. You get to see how important mental health is. You get plus size representation. All of that was amazing. And I really, really did like that, especially because depression was represented really well in my personal opinion. I liked those parts because you don't see that in books a lot, but everything else was just kind of, there. I don't know. The romance just didn't do it for me. The plot was fun, but it was one of those that was forgettable. But it was cute. And like the cover is really cute. I don't know. 3.5. And the newspaper nanny, I'm pretty sure it's Liam and Juliet. Is that right? It is. Okay. <laughs> Would you look at that? Liam is a retired NHL player and now he is a recently hired soccer coach. Did I just say soccer? I say NHL player and then I go a new soccer coach. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? It is cold out here in left field. He is a new hockey coach, obviously. Anyway, retired player, hockey coach. He needs a nanny for his two little girls and then he hires said nanny on a newspaper. Ooh, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> I think you guys can really tell when I don't like a book. Like I can still tell you what it's about, but I just don't have that passion for it. And you can tell in the way I'm talking. <laughs> this book was cute, but once again, it just didn't do anything for me. This one did nothing for me, in fact. It was funny and it was cute, which is why I gave it a 3.5 because I still had a fun time reading it and I read it in one sitting. It wasn't like it took me long. It didn't waste my time or anything. It's just I didn't love it. And Juliet, y'all, if there's one thing that bothers me in books is when they don't put a strong female character. And I'm not saying that any of these characters are weak female characters per se. Strong can come in so many different ways. You can write strong female characters in different ways all around. Now, I don't like when you write the man as such a badass and so amazing, and then the female just doesn't live up to that. Like, I want the female to be fucking better. I want her to be the queen that she deserves to be. And I felt like Juliet wasn't that in the newspaper nanny, for me at least. This book is upside down. I think she fell in this book, like, six different times. They meet for the first time, she falls. She goes ice skating, she falls. She goes to the shower, she falls. I'm like, get up, y'all be weak in the knees, stand up. Like, damn, I get it, you're clumsy, you're quirky, it's cute, I'm over it. <laughs> So many of you guys ask me constantly if I like every book I read. I definitely do not. None of us do. There's no way that's possible. I just usually don't talk about the books I don't like because I don't see the point in like just saying, hey, I hate this. Like for what? What is that gonna do for me or anybody else, you know? But in my wrap ups, I do talk about that because obviously it's the books I read. So I tell you what I rated it and what I thought. But that's why this is the only place that you'll see me say that I don't like a book. It's usually just on my Goodreads and my wrap up. <laughs> But yeah, it didn't do anything for me. It was a 3.5, it was cute or whatever. <laughs> Now, next up, we have Those Three Little Words by Megan Quinn. And listen, this, li hello? I need some coffee, please hold. 
What was I saying? Those Three Little Words by Megan Quinn. Okay, I know this book is part of a series. Have I read the series? No, <laughs> no, I have not. I just went directly into this book. I didn't miss much. Like, I think that there's one more book before this or two more books before this, something like that. And it's all about hockey players on a team together. And I definitely am really excited for the next one because they set up some couples that I'm excited for. So maybe I'll go back and read the other two eventually. <laughs> You can read it as a standalone, that's what I did, but I will be reading the next one. This one follows Penny and Eli, and Eli is a player on the hockey team. Like I said, they all are about players on the hockey team, and he knocks up his best friend's sister. Not only does he knock up his best friend's sister, but did I mention the best friend is also on the hockey team? Yeah, they have one night together where they just say, hey, fuck everything. One night, this bitch gets pregnant instantly. They said ovulation. <laughs> So it's a pregnancy trope. And I know that a lot of people are not big fans of that, but I feel like this book did it really well. I'm not against pregnancy tropes. I know it's a very unpopular opinion. I don't love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like, oh my God, I need me some pregnancy. I love me single parents. Anyway, it was so cute. It was so funny. I cackled throughout this book and I loved the found family between the players. One of Penny's friends, Blakely, I am the most excited for her book. I rated it a 4.25. It was too much miscommunication for it to be a five star for me personally. I still liked it. I still had a great time. It wasn't enough miscommunication for me to be like, oh, fuck this book. You know, it was just enough miscommunication. But since I don't love the trope, obviously I didn't like those parts. But 4.25, very cute, very funny, rom-com, those three little words. Now, next up, I read a series and it is called Calamity Montana by Will and Ash. Will and Ash is Devony Perry's pen name that she writes under. Calamity Montana is one of her series and I read The Bribe. This is the one I have the physical copy. I don't have the physical copy of the other ones yet, but I'm gonna get them because look how cute. Anyway, so it's The Bribe, The Bluff, The Brazen, and The Bully. These are the ones that are out right now, but the series is not finished. There's more coming. I read them in order. The order I just gave you is the order that they go in. They do set up for the other couples and they do mention the other couples in the book. So if you don't wanna get it spoiled, like what happened to the other couples, I would go in order. But all of these are set in Calamity and Montana. All of them are dual POVs. And basically throughout the series, you get this big fat family. So the bride follows Duke and Lucy and Lucy is a famous country singer who moves to Montana to get away from her fame and to get away from some things that happened to her. She dyes her hair, she changes her name and moves to Montana. And Duke is a sheriff in Calamity and he finds out about her little secret. She doesn't want to tell him why. So there is a little bit of suspense. This one is very insta-love, okay? Like instant attraction, insta-love between these characters. Insta-love is not one of my favorite things at all, but I liked it in this book. It was really cute and it just felt really homey. Then and the bluff follows Everly and Huxley. This one is marriage of convenience, y'all. So Huxley basically is an artist who has been to prison before and after he gets out of prison, he wants to be reunited with his daughter, but his ex-wife does not allow it. And his daughter is 16, I think. So basically he's fighting to get his daughter back, but no judge takes him seriously as a single dad who has been to prison before. Nobody wants to give him his daughter. So Everly offers to marry him so that it looks better on him that he has a wife and he is a family man and now he has changed for the better. And he agrees to this. So they get married to have his kid back. And meanwhile, they may or may not be having some one night stands that turn into a million night stands as well, okay? The Bluff has marriage of convenience, single parent, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine. I really, really liked this one. This is definitely a top one for me in the series. I loved Everly. Ever since I read The Bribe, she instantly was a fave of mine. And when I got to her book, it did not disappoint. Her and Huxley were so fucking cute. And I really love Marriage of Convenience. So this one was really good. Then you have The Brazen that follows Kerrigan and Pierce. Kerrigan owns a bunch of properties throughout town and she basically likes to take the properties and do construction on them, rent them out. That's basically what she does. She's a business owner. She has a backer who helps her with the money and his name is Gabriel until one day Gabriel passes away. His grandson comes to collect the money that she owes for all these properties that he has been helping her with. And his grandson happens to be Pierce. This one has a big twist. I did did not see coming at all in the last 50% of the book. So with The Brazen, you get a little bit of billionaire romance, you get a little bit of enemies to lovers. I will not say the other trope. And lastly, you have The Bully. This one is probably my favorite in the entire series. This one followed Cal and Nelly. And these two have known each other since high school and they have hated each other since high school. And now they both moved to Calamity, Montana, coincidentally at the same time. Cal is a retired football player, very hot, very grumpy, very bitch. And Nelly is a sweet sunshine girl who is nice to everybody, but to Cal. The thing with this one is, even though they hate each other, they may or may not have slept with each other several times over the years. It is an enemies with benefits. 
So the bribe, the bluff, the brazen, and the bully, I rated every single one a four star. I really, really liked them, but they were all insta love, which like I said, is not my preferred trope. If you like that trope, you're probably gonna love, love, love this series, but they were too insta lovey for me, but I did enjoy them a lot. It felt so comforting because it's a small town in Montana and you get to see this found family. And like I said, you get to know the characters even before you get to their books. If you're looking for a small town series with lots of different tropes, instant attraction, very quick reads, a calamity in Montana, look no further. Next up, I read A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. This book is dual POV, but in third person, if that makes sense. This book is also great to listen to. I read half of it and then I listened to the other half. Don't ask me why I did that. Actually, I'll tell you. It's because I couldn't get into it being in third person. I was like, SOS, help. There are only some books that I can read in third person. They have to be amazing. And this one was not one of those. So I read like the first half and then I couldn't do it and I listened to the rest. So the audiobook is really great. Anyway, like I said, A Brush With Love. It follows Harper. It follows Dan. I don't love the name Dan. It only reminds me of Gossip Girl. I can't think of any other Dan. I know there are probably other Dans out there, but I just think of Dan Humphrey. But anyway, Harper and Dan, they are both dentist students and Harper is top of her class. Harper is a genius. Harper's so smart. We love it. We love it. We love it. And Dan basically hates his life. He does not want to be a dentist whatsoever. <laughs> but he's doing it for his mother. So Harper and Dan are very different in that way, whereas dentistry is her passion. It is not his at all. Basically, she is running down a hallway one day and bumps into this man's and that's how they meet. She drops his project and she's like, I'll help you fix it. And then she does, she helps him fix it. She helps him fix many things. <laughs> This book was cute. It didn't do anything for me. Just like Weather Girl and The Newspaper Nanny, it was one of those that I finished and I was like, well, that was that. The end, never gonna think about it again. In fact, after I, I finished this book, I haven't thought about it until just now. I really, really loved the anxiety representation of this book. That was my favorite fucking part because it is like the author took exactly what anxiety is like and put it in book form. But yeah, that was pretty much the only part that I really remember loving. The rest was just kind of there. Some parts were a bit too cheesy for me. It was fluffy, it was fun. It just didn't leave me with anything at the end of the day. One of my least favorite parts about this book is when Dan and Harper are having a Marvel discussion. Dan dares to say that Chris Evans wasn't a good choice for Captain America. Moment of silence for Dan because that is when he died in my book. I can't like a man who thinks this way. Absolutely not, absolutely not. If you are not on your knees for Chris Evans, I don't fucking want it. And once I put this book away, I will never think about it again. 3.5. <laughs> I had so many three stars this month. See, that's for all of y'all that yell at me telling me I like every book. I do not, as you can see. <laughs> now, I finally did it. I finally read The Roommate. Are we screaming? Are we clapping? We better be. This book, y'all already know about it. Everybody has talked about this book. I am the only one that has not read it until just now. You got their different POVs, but told in third person. Once again, just like a brush with love. So The Roommate follows Clara and it follows Josh and Clara moves um, to California, I wanna say, thinking she's gonna move in with her childhood crush. Don't even remember his name, Emery, I think it was. Anyway, she thinks she's gonna move in with him. And when she gets there, he says, hey, no, I'm going on tour with my band. I, in fact, hired a guy from Craigslist to be your new roommate. What the fuck? What to heck, guy man? Excuse me? Bro dude did not care about Clara whatsoever. Anyway, he's besides the point because then Josh moves in and he's her random roommate. They start to get to know each other. She thinks he's just like a cute little golden retriever boy until she finds out he's a porn star. And she's like, what? So after Clara talks to Josh about the industry and after she researches it, she sees how much there is a stigma around, not only about adult film stars, but just about sex in general. There is a stigma around females enjoying it, around everybody doing whatever the fuck they wanna do with their body. For some reason, people tend to care. And that whole judgment of how much sex people are allowed to have, how much sex they're not allowed to have. She sees all of that in this book. She sees how unfair and how horrible all of that is. And she decides to tackle it head on, her and Josh. And they get to know each other in the meantime. I loved that part of this book. I loved it. Because who the fuck cares what anybody else is doing with their bodies? It is not yours. Mind your fucking business. And this book really tackled that. I loved, loved, loved that part. It was very sex positive. And Claire and Josh were so fucking cute. He was definitely golden retriever, but also with a little bit of spice. It was good. I rated it four stars. I really liked it. It was very cute. It was very fun. I loved the conversations. Josh was adorable. Claire was adorable. They kind of pissed me off sometimes, but it was cute nonetheless. I liked it. Four stars, the roommate. I finally read it. Now I'm going to discuss Kindle reads and audiobook reads before I show you the last two paperbacks I have because the last two deserve to go last because they were my favorite things ever. My only two five stars of the month. I will leave that for last. Oh, we pull out the Kindle. 
<laughs> we love her. So wretched, y'all. This is the third book in the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. Y'all know I love this series. I've talked about it enough already, but Hooked is the first book, Scarred is the next one, and then Wretched is the third one that just came out. They are not connected. They are all just a part of a series of fractured fairy tales, basically villains getting their happy endings. And this one was a Wizard of Oz retelling. It's not really a retelling, but kind of. Um, with the Wicked Witch and the Tin Man. Are you joking? Are you joking? Yes, please. So Wretched, much like the other books in the Never After series is dual POV and it followed Nicholas and Eveline. <laughs> this book was Innocent Guy, Bad Girl. I don't want to tell you too much about this one because the summary of the book doesn't tell you anything. So I will just say that Nicholas is a DEA agent who is tasked with catching a crime lord and his family. You have Eveline who happens to be crime lord said family. I will say nothing else, but it gives, it fucking gives. I rated it a 4.5 because with the entire Never After series, my only problem with it is none of them are paced right for me. Like the beginning and the middle of the books are all amazing okay but then the ending is very rushed and this one was the same it was a 4.5 look at the cover y'all come on eveline was the baddest bitch it was definitely my favorite part she was amazing at one point she tells nicholas that she hates that she lost control of a situation and this man gets on his knees and he says then take it back and Wretched is a dark romance, so are the other two in the Never After series, so please search up trigger warnings if you're gonna read it. Then I read Irresistible by Melody Harlow, y'all. <laughs> I read Ignite a while ago, and I fucking loved it, okay? Did I skip the entire series? Yes, I did. And then did I now go back and read the first book in the series? I did do that as well. Those are all things I did. I read Winnie's book before I read her dad's. They're all interconnected standalones. You don't need to read one and read the other, but I think I am gonna go through the whole series now, because let me just say I loved Irresistible. Irresistible follows Mac and Franny and it is dual POV and Mac is a single dad to three little girls and Franny is his nanny, also his co-worker, also his boss's daughter, also 10 years younger than him. So you get age gap, you get forced proximity, you get boss employee, you get single dad. Mm, this book gave, this book gave. It was also small town. It also had like a little bakery too. Ah! my favorite things coffee small town come on now this book was very similar to ignite i will say if you read ignite already this book is the same thing in different font and they say that in ignite too like they say that dex and winnie's relationship and their whole entire dynamic and plot and stuff is a lot like mac and franny and now i got to see that firsthand but it was so good i love the little girls in the book franny was an angel i knew that in ignite i saw how much of an angel she was but I did not give her enough credit because when I saw her in Irresistible, the woman can do no wrong. I rated this a 4.25. The only reason why it wasn't a full five star for me was because I had already seen the exact same thing in Ignite. The same thing I didn't like about Ignite, I didn't like about Irresistible, which was the guy being like, I'm not enough for you. I hate that trope. I hate the, I can't be the man you want me to be. Like, just be that man. We damn well know by the end of the book, you're gonna be that man. Why are you bluffing? Come on. <laughs> Why am I so angry today? Hello, she needs an exorcism. No, she just needed some coffee. Irresistible by Melanie Harlow, 4.25. I really, really liked it. Very comforting, very quick and fun read. I probably will go back and keep reading the rest of the series, but I might just read it all out of order, y'all. And then I read a novella by J.L. Seegers and it's called Again. Again is dual POV and it follows Amina and Jackson. And it is a marriage conciliation novella. Basically this couple gets divorced and then years later they meet again at their family wedding because <laughs> his brother and her sister are getting married. Yeah, out of the country. So they meet there because he is the best man and she's the maid of honor and he is set on getting her back. Very boy obsessed, love that part about it. I don't know, this this was okay. I think I expected a lot from this novella because so many people had told me it was five stars and so many people like loved it and cried. I really expected that for me as well, but then I didn't get any of that. I didn't shed a single tear and it was okay. I don't know, I rated it a three star. I don't know, it was just a whole big miscommunication. Three stars. Then I listened to Below Zero by Ali Hazelwood, which is also a novella. These novellas have only been coming out on audiobook. I'm not sure when she's gonna release paperback versions of them or even Kindle versions of them. But Below Zero is the third and final one in the Steminist novellas that Ali Hazelwood has been releasing. The first one is Under One Roof and the second one is Stuck With You and it all follows three best friends. The first one has Mara and Liam. The second one is Sadie and Eric. And then this one is Hannah and Ian. This one was definitely my favorite one out of the three. We got to see all the girls in each other's novellas, but this one felt different because we got to see just everyone. I don't know. 
it hit different. Basically, Hannah and Ian both work for NASA and they meet one day, form an instant connection, hit it off right away. But something goes wrong. They don't talk for quite some time. But now Hannah's on a dangerous expedition to the Arctic and Ian comes to her rescue. Like I said, this is the third one of the Stemnest novellas. I enjoyed all three of them. They were very fun, very quick, a little steamy. I loved the friendships. It was funny too. I just had a great time. I rated it four stars. And now the last Kindle book I read is The Resurrection of Wildflowers. This is the second book in the Wildflowers duet. First one is Confidence of Wildflowers and now the second one is The Resurrection of Wildflowers. So I went into The Confidence of Wildflowers, which is the first book in this series last month, expecting it to be a cute small town neighbor, grumpy sunshine, age gap romance, okay? And it was for the first 90%. But what happened in the last 10%? It just destroyed everything else about this book for me. It took me a solid month to process everything I felt about that book. And I think I rated it a three star because I loved the first 90% but the last 10 was so unnecessary and I just fucking hated everything about it and it destroyed the book for me, right? But then I did tell you guys that I would read the second book because it was left in a cliffhanger and I wanted to see what happens. Even though I knew I wasn't gonna like it, I was like, maybe I will. No, I was wrong. I hated it. In fact, more than I hated Confidence of Wildflowers, I hated Resurrection of Wildflowers. Somehow it was worse. I don't know. I rated it a two star. It's hard to talk about this second one without spoiling the first one, but let's just say that what they did in the last 10% of that first book. They barely really touched upon that in this book. It felt rushed. It felt like an extended epilogue. The characters forgave each other right away. It felt like completely different people from the first book to the second one. It felt like trauma for the sake of trauma. It didn't feel like the trauma was doing anything. It didn't feel like it had any good reason. It just felt like it was thrown in there just to shock you. And the second one had some unnecessary sadness as well. Like we already had so much sadness in the last 10% of the first book that you would think the second one would like be healing and like closure and it did have that but it also had unnecessary sadness to it as well as if the characters haven't been through fucking enough i hated everything about it i'm gonna be honest this duet i hate it i hate the duet so much Bayer and salem were the two mcs salem was very selfish i didn't like many of the choices she made. Caleb is another person in this book and Caleb is probably the only sane person in these books. He was the one that deserved better. He was the only one I really, really deeply liked. I don't hate books, y'all. I really don't. Like I dislike a lot, but I don't hate it but I hate these, I do. First book, okay, it was cute, but for the first 90%, the last four set absolutely ruined it. It was not a romance anymore to me. <laughs> as soon as I read that, I was like, nope, nope. The second book was just an extended epilogue. Like I said, three stars for the first one. I read it last month, you already know this, two stars for the second one. And definitely search up trigger warnings if you're gonna read these because trigger warnings out the wazoo. I don't even know how it's possible for one to trigger warn this because it, even if you search it up, you're not ready. Oh, I, I'm sorry. So now I only have two more books to discuss and I left both of them for last because they were my favorite reads of the month. I love it with my whole entire heart and I will not stop recommending it until you read it. So the first one is Letters to Molly by Devonie Perry. This one is the second book in the Mason Jar duet. The first one is The Birthday List. I read that I'm pretty sure last month. So if you wanna see me talk about that one, that one is in that wrap up. I think. And now I read Letters to Molly and I loved this book so much. I loved the first one too. I rated it 4.75. Liked it a lot, but this one was just so much better. I don't know what it is. This one was laced with something. Both the books in the Mason Jar duet are interconnected standalones, so the characters are in each other's books, but you don't need to read one to read the other, but I would definitely recommend because they're both amazing, so there should be no reason as to why you don't. Letters to Molly follows Molly and Finn, and it is duo POV, and Molly and Finn met in college, fell in love right away, and got married, and had two kids together, and now they are divorced, and they have been divorced for the past six years, and now Molly starts receiving these letters from Finn from many years ago. Go, but he's not the one sending them. Basically letters of their entire lives together, she starts getting written in his exact fucking words, but he's not sending it. Oh my God. This book had everything y'all. I know that the cover looks like messy, like Lionel Messi. Tell me that doesn't look like him in the cover. I don't know why. It's not, but it looks like him. Hello, Barcelona. What was I saying? This book had everything. This book was so fucking good. Oh my God, it was good. And it had the characters from the birthday list too. I love I love Molly so much. She's amazing. She's so strong, an amazing mother, an amazing person. I loved everything about her and I loved Finn. I understood both sides of their story and it is a marriage, I always forget how to call it, marriage reconciliation, marriage on the rocks. <laughs> what would you like today, ma'am? I would like a marriage on the rocks, please. <laughs> marriage reconciliation. Yeah, marriage in trouble, sure. Amazing, incredible, 10 out of 10. <laughs> 
Five stars, five stars, a million stars, infinity stars? Yes, I left this last because it is one of my favorite things of all time. I read a trilogy in one night, one night y'all. And that is the Grip Trilogy by Kennedy Ryan. Oh, y'all, the first book, is flow and it is a little novella. It's technically a prequel. Read it though. You need this for the context of these books. If you ever see anywhere to skip flow, don't do it because it gives you all the background you need for grip and still. This is definitely, definitely a trilogy you need to follow in order because it's all about the same couple. But yeah, flow is a novella and it's the prequel. Then you have a grip, which is the second one. And then you have still, which is the final one. And this trilogy follows grip and Bristol and is dual POV. So you get strangers to lovers and you get best friend sister, but then you also get second second chance romance and you also kind of get enemies to lovers as well. You get everything in these books. You get everything. Anyway, group in Bristol, you do get an interracial couple with them because you have a white female lead and you have a black male lead. These books are so much more than just romance to me. Don't get me wrong. The romance is fucking incredible. Grip in Bristol, Own Me, The Spice is Immaculate. Everything about them is amazing, but there's more to it than that because it also discusses racism. It discusses police brutality. It goes into prison reform. It also goes into what it's like for Grip in Bristol to be an interracial couple. Read the Grip Trilogy. Just read it. Trust me on one thing. Please read this trilogy. So like I said, read Flow first. This is the prequel. I rated it 4.5 stars. It was one of the best novellas I've ever read in my entire fucking life. It felt like an entire book and it is a very much needed prequel. It gives you all the context. And then Grip, I rated five stars, obviously. Obviously, there's no question about it. Bristol did piss me off a lot, but then you really understand her and I really came around to her as a character. This one's definitely my favorite in the trilogy. Five stars is not enough, a million stars, infinity stars. And then still is the last one. This one's also five stars for me. It's just everything. If I could describe the perfect man, it would be Grip. I loved everything about this. They were ride or dies. They were it's always been you. They were the definition of love. I felt that shit. I felt it hard in my bones, in my heart, in all of my body. Please read the Grip Trilogy, please. I beg you. Now you see why I left that for last because I knew I was gonna talk about it for a solid 10 minutes straight. Anyway, Shadi Bays, those are the 22 books I read this month. If y'all can guess the valedictorians, let me know. I'm sorry, did I just say the valedictorians? I meant the MVPs. Anyway, as if y'all couldn't guess the MVPs of this month, it was the Grip Trilogy and Letters to Molly. Anyway, Shadi Bays, let me know what books you read this month. Let me know your favorites. Let me know if you're gonna read any of these that I talked about today. I love you so, so much. And never forget that it's okay if you read five books or if you read 25. Do not force yourself to read 30 books in a month. If it happens, that's fucking awesome. You did that shit, go off. But if you read even one book, that's amazing too. And if you read none, that's also fine live your life. Just don't compare your goals to anybody else's. We're all at different times in our lives. We're all just floating on this rock. Nobody told you today, I love you. I fucking love the shit out of you. Okay, bye!